Hey folks, it's Brian again. Um wanna do a little follow up on my um Rock Roll Hall of Fame who should be you know, in the class of twenty eighteen. And I kinda of forgot a few people. You know, and, and these are people who were who've been eligible for many in the case of over twenty something years. Um you know men were made their first records in the mid sixties and they should have been in the hall back in the 80s or even in the early 90s. Um, case in point, uh, the first artist I'm going to say is um, Leslie Gore. You know, Leslie Gore, probably, you know, one of the most popular female singers of the 1960s. You know, she not only, you know, to me, she was like the sonic link between the girl group pop of the Ronettes and the Crystals and all that. And the Shangri Laws, and the later periods, women who came out after her, especially women like Grace Slick. I mean, look, she went from a song like It's My Party to You Don't Own Me, you know, which became a feminist anthem. And, um, you know, for me, she should have been in the Hall of Fame years ago. And unfortunately, she won't, if she does get in, she won't be there. Because um, she was one of the main victims of uh, the curse of 2016. Um, another artist I think should band I should think should be in there are the Monkees. You know, this is the band that pretty much um, set the table for MTV. They were the ones who, you know, they weren't. They, they, the big knock on them was they were created for a TV show, and they're basically a TV. A, a manufactured band, but they wound up becoming a band. You know, they even went on tour. Of course, remember the story about how Mickey Dolans was the one who suggested they have Jimi Hendrix open open up for them. Yeah, that's a lot of balls. <laughs> um, another artist I think should be in all another band I think should be in the hall is a Paul or Paul Revere and the Raiders. You know, this is the band that pretty much invented wearing wild costumes on stage and doing a lot of the stage antics that a lot of the bands were of the 60s and, and 70s were doing. And they pretty much were a precursor to that era. Um, another band that I think should be in, or R should be in, is Tommy, Tommy James, you know, a man who, you know, pretty much was, you know, one of the great had one of the great stories that you know, you know, from his, you know, rock and early rock and roll days, becoming a megastar in the, in the late sixties, early seventies, you know, you know, kind of involved with the mob and the, and then he's becoming a born again Christian, you know, and, and writing some of the great songs of the late nineteen sixties, you know, Crystal Blue, per, Blue Persuasion, um, uh, Hanky Panky. Moni Moni, you know, I think we're alone now. All that stuff was was him. And then, of course, there were a couple of guys who I think should be in that um, were producers. Um, one guy is Terry Melcher. Uh, Melcher, of course, was famous, was produced the Birds' first early singles, including Tambourine Man, Turn, Turn, Turn. Um, and... and you know, of course, he's more famous for being the original target of Charles Manson because he lived in a house where, where Sharon Tate, he was the original owner of the house that Sharon Tate got killed in. Um, and another guy I think should, should get kind of consideration is a guy by the name of Bones Howe. You know, he produced the association, uh, Mamas and Papas, a lot of the great 60s pop acts. And to me, Meltrin and, um, and how are the rightful heirs to, to Phil Spector, the great producers? And why they're not in, I don't know. But hopefully 2018 will finally see them get in as in the non performer category or or the award of merit or whatever they want to call it. So anyway, that's my thoughts. And let me know what yours are.